Welcome to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for 8th grade students, although anyone is welcome to tune in. This lesson is our second lesson in this week's series. My name is Mr. Ayers, and I am an 8th grade ELA teacher in Tennessee schools. I am so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it at www.tn.gov education. You can still tune in to today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since today we'll be talking about things we've learned previously. Today we will continue learning about real life body snatchers. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need paper, pencil, and a surface to write on. It's also good if you have the student packet for ELA grade eight, lesson 12, which can be found at www.tn.gov education. If you can't print that packet, don't worry about it. We'll take notes on paper and you'll be able to follow along. All right, let's get started. Today, our goal is to read the informational text called the Top 10 Real Life Body Snatchers so that we can analyze the information in the text to determine its meaning. We will also begin reading a portion of the text. We'll reread it and pause along the way for deeper understanding. At the end of the lesson, I will sign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. Now, Let's dig into the informational text we'll be studying, which is an article about real life body snatchers. If you tuned into the previous lesson, you'll remember that historically people who were called body snatchers were people who stole dead bodies from graves in order to study or sell them. But these aren't the type of body snatchers we'll read about. We're going to read about certain types of parasites or living things that survive by using or hunting other living things, which we call their host. As a reminder, we'll be hearing a lot of scientific names in this text, like Toxoplasma gondii from the previous lesson. Don't worry about understanding or remembering them. Just know their names scientists use to refer to different species. I'll be clear about what we are referring to. Yesterday, we looked at the introduction and certain words and phrases will, that will help you understand the text. This text has several sections in it. One section on each real life body snatcher or parasite. Today, we will study in depth the first of those sections, and then we will learn about more as we go through the week. As a reminder from yesterday, we will use the information we learned today to work and fill in the Venn diagram on the article. This is what this, the diagram looks like. This Venn diagram shows some of the things parasites do when they infect their host. Some change body features, some use chemicals and venoms, some lay eggs in their host, and many do a combination of two or even all three of those things. As we read about 10 different parasites this week, we're going to be sorting them into the various sections of this Venn diagram. For example, if we read about a parasite that uses venom and changes body features, but does not lay eggs, we'll put it in the upper left section where the circles overlap to show that it is in the chemicals and venoms and changing body features. The, don't worry, worry about all that just yet. Just know that we're going to complete this exercise at the right times as we go through the lesson. So let's begin the text. 
I'll begin by reading a section of the text about parasites and their host. We will analyze each section of the text in a, for, to look for a deeper level, deeper meaning. As I read the text, please take notes on your paper. Try to focus on the relationship between each parasite and its host and write down key details about them. So let's begin. Top 10 real life body snatchers. Paragordius tricuspidatus. So exactly how a hairworm parasitizes a cricket is unknown. Scientists suspect that the insect ingests either an infected mosquito or water containing hairworm larvae. Okay, so notice how the author says exactly how a hairworm parasitizes a cricket is unknown. Okay, that word parasitizes is an unusual word and not used very often. Based on what we have discussed about the word parasite, Take a moment and write on your paper what you think the word parasitizes means in the context of the text. Take about 30 seconds. Great. So the word parasitizes is, of course, very similar to the word parasite. In this case, the author is taking the noun parasite and using in its verb form parasitize to indicate that the hairworm is acting upon the cricket in a way that a parasite does to take advantage of it. But once inside the hairworm grows three to four times as long as the cricket filling all parts of his body except the head and legs. Hold on, what? Can you imagine having a worm inside of you that's four times as long as you are tall and having it fill up your entire body except for your head and legs? I mean, if you're five feet tall, that's like having a 20 foot long worm in you. Gross. But Let's get back to the text and find out more about this poor cricket who's gotten a worm parasite inside of it. What happens next is even more bizarre. The parasite, Paragordias tricuspidatus, produces proteins that hijack the cricket's central nervous system, making it attracted to areas brighter than its shaded forest home. Hmm, okay. So reading on in this section, we notice that the author says that the parasite produces proteins that hijack the cricket's central nervous system. What does that term hijack mean? So take a moment and write on your paper what you think the author means by using the word hijack in the context of this article. Be specific in using details from the article. Take about 30 seconds. That's right, to take over. The hairworm is taking over the cricket central nervous system. You may have learned about the central nervous system in science classes, or you may learn about it in a future class. We don't need to understand it in depth now, except to know that it plays a key role in controlling what the body does. So when the hair worm hijacks the cricket central nervous system, how exactly does this affect the cricket? Yes, it makes it, it makes it leave its shaded forest home and become attracted to bright areas of light and water, places the cricket normally doesn't go in places that might even be dangerous to it. So let's go back to what I asked you a minute ago, what the author meant by using the word hijack. To help dig deeper into that question, let me ask you this. What would you picture if the author just said the hairworm uses 
the cricket central nervous system instead of hijacking. Yeah, I would think that instead of taking over the central nervous system by force, the heroin simply took a part of it for its benefit. But the author in this article purposely chose the word hijack, which changes the picture in my mind a bit. When the author says the parasite produces proteins that hijacks the cricket's central nervous system, I imagine in my mind someone hijacking a plane or a bus they are taking over the vehicle by force, redirecting it away from its normal route and using it for its own benefit, regardless of who else needs it. So keep that in mind when we're looking at a word like hijack in the context of an article like this, it conveys a certain kind of tone. So let's quickly revisit the idea of tone. For what is tone and why is it important? Take a moment and write your answer on your paper. All right, so let's take a look at what you put. Tone is how a writer communicates an attitude toward a subject or a topic. The parasite Hairworm in this case. What kind of tone do you think the author is conveying here with the word hijack? In other words, how does the author feel about the hairworm? Take a moment to reflect and then write your answer on your paper. Great. I think he's trying to show that he's a bit scared and horrified by the worm's actions. The way it hijacks the cricket is alarming. And I don't know about you, but I agree. I would not want to be that cricket. Okay, let's keep reading. The cricket, Nemobius sylvestris, heads then to an exposed pond or river and dives in at which point the hairworm emerges from its host. In an aquatic or water-based environment, the worm can find a mate and reproduce. Let's look at that sentence again. The cricket, Nemobius sylvestris, heads then to an exposed pond or river and dives in, at which point the hairworm emerges from its host rear end. Why do you think the word exposed means in the sentence? Take a moment and write down your answer on your paper. Thank you. The word exposed means to cover, to uncover something, to make it easier to see. In the context of the passage, the author refers to an exposed pond or river as it is a pond or river that is the is open, not covered up or blocked from view. It is easily accessed by the cricket. For some crickets, it's a leap to their death, but others, lucky enough not to have drowned, have lived for several months after the parasite removes itself. In fact, the cricket's strange attraction to light subsides as little as 20 hours later. Let's look at one more academic word in this section. Here's the sentence. In fact, the cricket's strange attraction to light subsides as little as 20 hours later. You may or may not be familiar with the word subsides. Based on the context, what do you think the word subsides means? Take a second and write down the word and what you think its definition is on your paper. So the clue is in the sentence that helped me 
was the phrase, as little as 20 hours later. I knew from earlier in the passage that the parasite had made the cricket be unusually attracted to light. This sentence says that the cricket's attraction usually subsides as little as 20 hours later, which indicates to me something changed about it. I can infer from this clue that the attraction is decreasing or fading away. In other words, the cricket is returning to its normal state of avoiding light. So subside means to decrease. Okay, let's reread this section now that we have further explored some of the key words in it. Be sure to keep taking notes as I read, as you'll add them to your Venn diagram shortly. Paragordius tricuspidatus. So exactly how a hairworm parasitizes a cricket is unknown. Scientists suspect that the insect ingests either or an infected mosquito or water containing hairworm larvae. But once inside, the hairworm grows three to four times as long as the cricket, filling all parts of its body except the head and legs. Let's make sure we understand what is happening here. Scientists are trying to figure out how this hairworm gets inside a cricket to become a parasite. They think that the cricket somehow eats or takes in through its mouth a mosquito or water containing hairworm larva. Once they get inside, the larva does the expanding trick and fills the entire body of its cricket. So let's see what happens next. What happens next is even more bizarre. The parasite, Paragordius tricuspidatus, produces proteins that hijack the cricket's central nervous system, making it attracted to areas brighter than its shaded forest home. The cricket, Nemobius sylvestris, heads then to an exposed pond or river and dives in, at which point the hairworm emerges from its host. In an aquatic or water-based environment, the worm can find a mate and reproduce. So if you tuned into our previous lesson, you'll remember that parasites can alter or change their host appearance and or behavior. It sounds like this hairworm changes its host behavior by producing proteins or chemicals to make the cricket head toward the light, then dive into the water and possibly even drown, all so that the hairworm can get the water it needs to reproduce. Hmm. That's crazy. But this is important information that we need to add to our Venn diagram. Go ahead and take out your copy of the Venn diagram that you drew yesterday. If you were not able to draw it yesterday, go ahead, get your paper out, and we'll make a fresh copy. This is important information that we need to add. So I want you to Think about your notes that you've written down and recall what we've read together. We read about one parasite today, the hairworm in the cricket. But we'll read about more as we go through the week. Take a moment now to think about where the information you just learned might fit into the Venn diagram. Does it lay eggs? Does it use chemicals? Does it change body features? I want you to write hairworm and cricket where you think the pair belongs on the Venn diagram. Great, I'll show you what information I identified and you can see how it matches up in your thoughts. If I include information that is not on your Venn diagram or in your notes, please add what I tell you. So the main note from today that I noticed goes into the chemicals and venom circle. Let's look back at our notes. I see that the hairworm produced a protein that hijacks the cricket's central nervous system. That qualifies as a chemical 
or venom that changes the host's behavior. Take a minute now to make, your, to make sure your diagram matches mine. Perfect. We'll add more information to our diagram over the next few lessons. For now, let's finish the last portion of today's text. For some crickets, it's a leap to their death, but others, lucky enough not to have drowned, have lived for several months after the parasite removes itself. In fact, the cricket's strange attraction to light subsides as little as 20 hours later. So before we go on, let me check. As we read through the text that second time through, did you write any key details about how the hairworm and the cricket interact? If you didn't, take a minute now to do so. Great. So what did you write? I wrote, when the hairworm gets inside the cricket, it hijacks the cricket's behavior, making it dive into water and risk drowning. Then the hairworm comes out of the cricket and reproduces in the water. So I just kind of summarized that section. I made sure I used the word hijacks because it was one of those important words that we made sure we point out at the beginning of the lesson. Take a minute to add or change anything that you need to. Let me read mine to you one more time. When the hairworm gets inside the cricket, it hijacks the cricket's behavior, making it dive into water and risk drowning. Then, the hairworm comes out of the cricket and reproduces in the water. Take 30 seconds or so to add to your notes. Great. All right, so we're getting closer to the end of our lesson now. And while we do that, let's take a minute and reflect on today's lesson, what we learned, and then we'll look at our independent work that we need to do. So as we reflect on the lesson, take about 30 seconds just to jot down just your overall thoughts on the lessons, your biggest takeaways from what we did. So today, I put on my notes that we learned about the parasite, the hairworm, and the way that it takes advantage of its host, the cricket. For your independent work, I want you to respond to the writing prompt. In your own words, 
write a summary of today's passage on the hairworm in the cricket. As you write the summary, be sure to use each of the following vocabulary terms that we use today. Parasitizes, hijack, ingests, exposed, subsides. Take a second to write down that writing prompt and I'll be right back with you. Great. So as you write your summary, I want you to think back. If you've done the previous lessons with us, you we wrote some summaries of some text. Um, I know that you, I'm sure in your English classes, you've written some summaries. Just pick out those key details from what we've gone over today and write a few sentences that gives the, the biggest ideas about what we learned about the hair worm and the cricket. Again, making sure that you use those five vocabulary words that we pointed out. Awesome. So we've reached the end of our lesson. It is so much fun. I really am enjoying this scientific text. Um, some of the words are a little bit challenging for me to read, and I have to really think about how, how to pronounce those. So, But it's really a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed working on the Body Snatchers informational text. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.